November 30th uh, Finance Committee meeting at about a little after 6 o'clock. October 30th. What did I say? Oh, not talking about. Nope. October 30th. Pushing it. I am. All right. So, uh, David, do you want to start off with um, what you just gave us here? Sure. All right. So, you have five sheets of paper, and obviously, it's a lot of information. We'll cover this again next week at 7 o'clock uh, on the 7th at 6 o'clock okay. when we do the tri-board okay. and let's just pause here for the moment and talk a little bit about the tri-board. The tri-board is going to consist of at a minimum the tax classification information and the hearing will happen on the 14th of November. Every year uh, we make the select board makes a decision whether to split the tax rate or keep a unified tax rate. Right now we have a unified tax rate. If they decide to split the tax rate, then there's certain levels to which they could take that shift. Uh, and they'll talk about it. Last year, we, we did this in a two-step. We had a presentation from the assessor talking about split tax rates, unified tax rates, the fiscal health of the town, what the impact of, of keeping everything together would be, what the impact of splitting the tax rate may be. Uh, and we gave everybody a week to think about this and to sort of have raise any questions they have, do additional research based upon feedback that we had. And then the following week, uh, hold the, the formal hearing where the votes would be taken. So we intend to do that again this year. So on the 7th, Dan Zetonic from the assessor's office will give the information about the tax classification. And then on the 14th of November, the select board will have the formal hearing and take their votes at that point. Okay. Why are we doing it again? Well, there's a number of new people on both the finance committee and the select board. And so given that there's new, new, this is a new process for some people, it, we found it helpful to give everybody this time and space to go through the, the material and, and digest it and make sure that they're comfortable with the vote that they're taking. Am I correct to say that we are there for input or to or are there to, um, but we are not part of the vote? We will not be voting on this, correct? But I'm sure you, could, you have a recommendation. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure that the select board want to include you as part of the financial management team so that you can make your recommendations known. And okay. Any questions or concerns that you may have, you have an opportunity to raise it with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what we're doing next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Tonight, we're going to just talk a little. I thought it would be helpful to talk about where we are financially as a town for the first quarter. And so if you turn to the page that says general fund actual and estimated cumulative expenses, it's this one right here. Okay. And the long story short is that we're doing okay. Um, but let's talk about how, how we're doing and what that looks like. So I've put together three columns here. It's actual expenses for the first quarter, and you can see that as a town for the general fund, we've spent four and a half million dollars as of the end of September. Okay. Mm -hmm. The middle column there is where I think we should supposed to be. That's our projected expenses. And then the column to the right is where we were last year, so we have an opportunity to, to gauge how well we're doing. There's a chart on the next page with two trend lines. This trend line that goes from left to right all the way up, that's the estimated expenses. And the little black line down in the first three months of the quarter show where we actually are. 
So we're tracking very closely to where we expect it to be in terms of our expenses. There's nothing standing out that tells me that we need to be worried or anything like that first quarter. <clears throat> the next one will be summary of revenues to date. All right, here I've measured, given you several measurements. Uh, we're looking at three different funds that come in terms of revenues. This is for the general fund. There's taxation, there's local receipts, that's all of the licenses that we issue, the dog licenses, liquor licenses, mm -hmm. common food permits, pistol permits, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's state aid. Mm -hmm. all right. So I look at, first of all, how do we measure up in terms of a percentage of budget have we brought in this year compared to last year? And we've brought in for real estate and personal property taxes, 27.3% of our budget in the first quarter, compared to this time last year, that was 25.5%. Um, for local receipts, we were 29%. This time last year, we were 24.6%. State aid, we are at 34.5%, whereas last year, we were at almost 25%. So in all the categories, we're doing better than we did this time last year. Mm -hmm. And if you turn the page, you'll see that we have <clears throat> on the left is the actual receipts, middle columns are the expected receipts, and the third column to the right is what happened last year. And in all cases, we're doing better than we had expected which is good news. So our expenses are right on track and our revenues are higher than we had thought first quarter. And then this is projected in a chart for taxes. You can see with this line for the first three months that we're just a little bit above where we should be. The next chart is Local receipts that were well above where we were expected to be this time last year mm -hmm. and where we expected to be this year. And then finally, the state aid is significantly higher. Why is that? Well, if you look at the very right-hand side of your, of your chart, you'll see this little dog leg that goes off. That represents a late payment by the state in FY 2018, this past June. They paid their June payment in July. Hmm. So that didn't get captured in FY 18. Oh, so are we counting it in? And it gets counted this year. <clears throat> so two things good, I mean, this is kind of good because it's free cash. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of good that if we continue along this trend, we're going to have a significant boost in free cash in FY 2019, which is this current fiscal year, or they'll be late again, which will put us right back on target anyways, so there'll be no damage done. So this is something to watch. Okay. What accounts for the growth in uh, tax revenue? Is it just growth in the town, commercial growth, and real estate growth? Yeah, so better valuations are value for the, the taxable and non-taxable value of the town uh, reached a billion dollars uh, for the first time ever. So not too many towns of 5,000 people can say that they have a billion dollars worth of value out there. Now the taxable portion of that's about $990 million, so just a little bit below a billion. But if you throw in the UMass land and the chapter land and all the other stuff, you, you get a lot. So the value of the property is higher. Uh, there's more building going on, uh, more taxable building, and that's driving the property taxes up. But there's also the planned increases in taxes based upon the building projects that we're doing. So 
to ninety-five dollars. <coughs> so that brings money in that we a little bit better. It's also an aggressive uh, policy that we have to collect taxes. You know, we work with people wherever possible. If they fall behind, we're happy to work with them to come up with a payment plan, whatever works for them. Um, but there are unfortunately people who will not or cannot pay and our policy is to collect it as uh, quickly as possible. Now we're doing nobody any favors by allowing interest to accumulate at 14 or 16 percent depending on mm -hmm. where they are. So it's in our best interest collectively to collect that money as soon as possible. So that's the general fund. Expenses on track, revenues will be tighter than the projected. We have three enterprise funds. I chose water because that's the first one that came to me. All right, and the layout of the chart of the table should look very familiar. On the left is the actual, in the middle is the expected, and then last year's revenues. Actual. <laughs> so we've brought in for water about um, three hundred thousand dollars of uh, revenue in the first quarter, and our expenses are just a little bit above three hundred thousand. That's normal at the beginning of the year. That that expenses are outpacing revenues, but that quickly catches up for the abilities to come in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you see this in the chart. Where are the actual expenses? Where are the actual um, revenues? And you see a gap there, but that's normal. That's, that's not anything that concerns me. Now, if that persists, into December, then I am concerned. But for right now, this is a normal trend line. If you look at the history of water, the front page on the right hand, you'll see that the target um, that we needed to bring in was a million three, bottom line. Yep. Right over here. Right over there. Oh, I million three, we actually brought in a million five. And so we did very well. And I'll, I'll show a chart showing our expenses. So we did okay in water. Picture is less cheerful when we get to sewer. see that uh, revenues here in sewer the revenues have ex actually exceeded the expenses that's unusual um, and I'll be watching that it's good news but I'll be watching it because it's behavior I had not expected uh, maybe that there's some big bills that uh, were not posted in September mm -hmm. If you look at FY18 revenues, um, our target was a million one five, and we didn't achieve that. We got nine hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. So there's a gap there, and we've been talking about sewer being in trouble for a while. So that's going to be one of the things that we're going to be paying a lot of attention to in FY 2020 mm -hmm. and 2019 making sure that we have that under control. And then we have a new enterprise fund, Hadley Media. So Hadley Media really only gets one source of revenue, and that's the very last month of the fiscal year. They get a payment from Charter Communications. So we go from July to June with no revenue at all coming in, typically. 
Uh, but they, they're racking up expenses because we need to pay these folks every year, need to run the equipment and all that kind of stuff. So we have a um, uh, reserve of about $220,000, which supports Hadley Media until we get that payment in. Mm -hmm. um, last year, you see that we actually got two payments in in March. Uh, no, April, we got $75,000. I have that in the non-recurring column because that's a one-time payment and we will not see that again in the life of this contract. <coughs> contract expires in 2024. So we get 75000 once a year? No. You're saying no, we don't. Twice, twice, twice in two years. So in 2014 we got 75000 and then in uh, FY 2018 we got another uh, 75000 and that's it. That's, that's all charters going to Charter is going to, that's charter's contribution to capital payments for, um, for uh, Hadley Media. The operational budget is supported by an annual uh, payment of representing 4% of the gross sales of the uh, cable the system in the, uh, in the town, and that's about $69,000 a year. That, okay. That's, that's yearly. That's yearly. And that'll continue until 2024. So it looks a little scary that you know you don't have any revenue whatsoever in the first quarter of uh, Hadley Media, but it is to be expected. So if we're gonna, if they're gonna, right now, if we're looking at about 70,000 a year. And I'm looking at the estimated annual expenses. I'm gonna earn, am I looking at it right, 121,000? That was last year and that included capital expenses. Okay, so this so one we're looking at 72. 72. Mm -hmm. Okay. 72.6. Oh, because the last one had capital expenses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Close. So that's where you are at this point. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Those are good numbers. Those look good. So, uh, just to go over, uh, when will we start to do the budget for next year? Already working on it. So okay. We're right on time. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have four select board members only in November. One person is going to be out of the country for the two meetings in November, so out of respect for that person, I would, I'm going to ask the select board to work on the budget in terms of giving directions and shape uh, for uh, the month of December, but there's no reason why we can't start talking about what the priorities may be. Uh, okay. So um, I have a request for um, some things for the budget for coming up. One of the things, and I think you probably even have this, but I thought it would be helpful in, to have in the book like a chart from DPW, a list of all their, all their vehicles, the year of the vehicles, when, you know, it's expected to be, in, we're expected to have it for eight years, 120,000 miles, that's what an average is something like that, list of all the vehicles. And then if we have, and then maybe in another column have a list of um, the miles that that took. And then maybe in another spot, how much money have we put into it for repairs? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason for a lot of that being is, uh, we have a lot of questions often at the town meeting, especially when it came to like the police, how many police cars do we have? And, and I don't really know that those kinds, how many trucks do we have? How many police cars do we have? And I thought too, it would be helpful 
if we could plan if we knew these are the cars this is what we're putting into these cars or these vehicles so we could see that we're going to be you know in it's in if it's in the book on a regular basis if we just have it on a regular thing mm -hmm. our assets we would know um what to plan for mm -hmm. i think if we have some a big vehicle that's given us a lot of trouble and in the school buses would be you know another big <coughs> ticket item mm -hmm. that we have to look out for you know how often do we have to have a school bus? How many school buses do we have? And when are we going to be looking for another one so we can start to plan? Now, I know a lot of it is part, you're going to be doing the, it would be good for the planning, um, uh, capital planning anyways. Mm -hmm. And I know they do a lot of that already. They have, like Marlo had an idea in his head. These are, I, I want to have these cars on a regular basis. So he, he keeps up with it. So it's not all of a sudden everything's breaking down. Mm -hmm. But do you have, do we, do they already do something like that? Yeah, so we've been working towards that for a couple of years now. Uh, we've been trying to get that into the capital plan because it's, it's this is more of an operational budget, uh, but the capital plan should have an inventory of what we have. And like you said, it's condition, life expectancy, and uh, planned replacement schedule, yeah. and the value of each. Right. And so when we could see it, and at the end, oh, we're expected, oh, well, we're going to try to trade that one in, and maybe we'll get money back for the trade in, or just so we just have, a, you know. And then, and then we can see if some, all of a sudden, all we're getting, that nothing's being traded in. Well, heck, we have a, a big inventory, and maybe we should start getting rid of it. If we're not going to the lots, we can't see it. Yeah. So it'd be nice to be able to see it on a piece of paper and to see what's being used. Okay. And to have a list. That would be great. Um, in, in addition to the, uh, the list, um, it would be really nice at some point to us to meet with, and, and this is just my opinion, to meet with the um, build, no, I don't even know, is it the, it's not the building, maybe it is the building committee. Because we're gonna, we know we're going to start to, what, what we, I want to know what their priorities are. What are they looking at? Municipal Building Committee, I think it is. Yeah, because right right now we kind of bypass them. All of a sudden, with the library, the senior center, and everything else, they kind of. But I would like to have you know understand where it, it doesn't even. It, and you probably don't realize that we have them because everything's getting bypassed from mm -hmm. them. But I think that we need to get back on track, and just they're the ones that go through everything and and. And recommend. and recommend, right? Should, and, should, and get priorities. You should invite them into the And yeah, I would like to set up something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, I don't know. Um, probably during a quiet time, you know, in between that. <laughs> <laughs> but I. When's that? <laughs> but um, at, at some point, I was hoping maybe you could mention <coughs> it to them if you. If you <clears throat> but I'd like to have them. Set up a meeting with them. Okay. So, uh, the other thing I'd like to set up a meeting with, I know we meet with the schools, but I also would like maybe to set up a meeting to talk, and I believe we could get the budget, because we have a brief thing when we do the budget time with the schools. Before that period of time comes, I would like to sit down. Um, and go over the budget, the school budget, at some point. Because I have questions, and I think Kathy brought up some good questions, and she knows a lot more about the schools than I do. But example of school budget, what, the school lunches, where does that money go? Who, what bucket goes where, you know? So it, it makes a difference when we're voting on certain things, mm -hmm. you know? And so I would like to have a, a better understanding of the school budget, you know? because they have other sources of income coming in and I don't really understand where it all goes. Well, that we definitely need to speak to the uh, school superintendent on. Cause... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just figured it would be more of a meeting that we would just focus just with that and it wouldn't, uh, it would be something that they, she would help us with understanding. Because mm -hmm. yeah. um, the... I think that came up at voting. 
you know, the 54,000 or 64 for the equipment. For the equipment for the and kitchen. And that's specific to a lunch program, which they're under the, I'm sure they're under the National School Lunch Program, federally funded, which means they have to keep all of the money that they either get or don't have. Maybe they're in the red. But all of the money that they make clearly needs to be spent within that department and not outside that department. That's part of the National School Lunch Program. So I look forward to you all talking to the school yeah. superintendent. So I then that's that. what we're you know that's what we're talking about. Like we don't even know what's in the net, what's in that line item for them. Mm -hmm. You know, as voting town to give, and then that money getting that money from what we just voted on, saying that we'll vote again for. Mm -hmm. They have to count that as income into that department. So that may not be the best thing for them to do, or maybe it is. But it's very clear on the National School Lunch Program, the federally funded programs that I'm sure they're part of. It's very clear. So, just saying. Well, I just thought it would be nice to, if we take their budget and we go through a little bit of it with them and, and they help us understand it a little bit. Right. Like, kind of like you took this budget and went through it with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would hope, you know, I'm looking to see if they could help with us, you know, and go through I'm it. I'm sure they're happy more to detailed. talk to you. That would be great. Yeah. Because that's a thing. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, and I know about the school choice and the school, and, and that's what we usually focus on, the, the, the kids coming in and going out, and the, um, the state aid, we, we focus a lot on that, but we don't focus a lot on some of the other little ones, little items that I'd like to just have a clue on. Great. So those were, so those were just a couple of the items that I was thinking for the okay. next budget season. All right, very good. Thank you. All right, so um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, David, is the, I, I know that they, at one point there's a committee that was gonna start up, and I know that we talked about, um, the committee was gonna look at all the departments. I think Molly was gonna start it at one point. Um, and I know we have a, a sort of, um, um, we put th was thirteen thousand into something to go through the departments and do a study. Yep. Right. That's a classification compensation. Plan. Yes. Yep. Just waiting for the certified votes from Jessica, and then we can rock and roll on that. Okay. Perfect. And I'm thinking that might have something to do with this group too that hasn't and has it formed yet or has I don't it not think formed it, yet? I don't think it's ever formed. I think that's a that's a project that still has to be kicked off. Okay. So, um, if it does, when it does, we'd I'd like someone, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it would be great yep. to be um, part of that. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I, you know, I know we talked about um, in, when we do the more for the next time. One of the things I didn't, and, and I don't know if we can sometimes it, it take it out. I don't like sometimes when they're all grouped together. One of the things I was not, did not like, and it's, because, and it's for transparency reasons, too. Did not like the fact that, that the one, only one person was getting that, um, everybody else was just getting a cola, and one person got a step. And it was hidden in the middle of that. It, it, you know, I don't mean the word hidden, but it was in, in, with all the, all that, I I'd rather we, things we, be taken out. We did discuss this. We, we discussed. We discussed, we, discussed, we discussed it on several occasions. But not on yes. Town floor. No. But, but I didn't bring it up on town. I did not want to start. You know, something else. But I thought it should be more pub. More. We discussed it, mm -hmm. but in the warrant, I'm saying, I think it should be something that it. Sh it, it should be obvious. To the voters. More transparent. Mm -hmm. A little bit more obvious to the voters on um, exactly what each thing is, instead of lumped together, and something like that. Okay. That's just my two cents. I just feel it's not transparent enough. It's well, the, that's one of the things that we've been working on is for several years now is to increase the transparency, the accessibility, the availability of and the responsiveness of the town to the people making decisions on town meeting floor. So 
we go to a lot of work with the book and, with and a lot of them with yeah the public forum and mm -hmm. getting the word out and mm -hmm. doing it run through on town on tv i know um, and i don't want the meetings to so last anything, a lot longer but it, it just anything we can do to increase that we're willing to give it a try sure i'm, I'm just saying when things are lumped together that's when it gets missed mm -hmm. And I just some things get lumped together, and it's not. I, I'd rather, in some cases, start pulling some things out. I did like the, you know, we can we can have one vote or something, but I do like. I'd rather see things more pulled out sometimes mm -hmm. than lumped together. That's just my opinion. All right. Okay. Does anybody else have anything else to add to questions? Um. Oh, the uh, just because we do, I do want to go over a little bit of the, um, the administrative charges. Administrative charges, okay. exactly. All right. How much detail do you want? Well, I I kind of would like um, a good amount of detail because. It is important to these departments. Okay. It's, it's very depart important. Um, and also, can, do you have any research on compared to what other towns do? Yep. Yeah. All right, so a lot of this information is contained on page 74 of the budget book. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to run through a whole lot of information and just, just go to page 74. Okay. And you'll be able to follow it. Mm -hmm. All right, so a very long time ago, the town put together the two enterprise funds, one for water, one for sewer. They are, in fact, under separate commissions at that, 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 that time. The town made a policy decision through the select board at that time that these enterprise funds would be self-sustaining and that they would not be taxpayer-funded. So the people who are living in Hockenham and paying taxes and will never ever see a sewer are not paying taxes to support the sewer system. Less of an issue with the water system because almost everybody is on water but not everybody is. There are mm -hmm. some people who have wells mm -hmm. and they don't want their tax money going to support the water system. There are some exceptions along the line for capital projects, <coughs> water lines along Route 9, the Callahan water wells. That debt for those two projects were split either entirely with the, the taxpayers paying the, the bill or paying for half the bill. But except for those two cases, the, these two enterprise funds are supposed to be self-sustaining. So if you look at the operational budgets for these enterprise funds page 71 page 70 mm -hmm. you'll see that the operational budgets cover salaries for the people who work in water and sewer uh, they cover the gas and electricity the chemicals and the uh, other op other operating uh, uh, budgets but they don't cover everything that supports the enterprise fund, so there are some hidden costs to the taxpayers that still have to be accounted for. Those hidden costs are indirect costs and direct costs. Those direct costs are the easiest ones to calculate. They're the health benefits. There's the retirement payment. There's the workers' compensation payment. All of those things that those sewer and water, uh, and water workers are receiving are handled in other budgets. Mm -hmm. So there has to be an adjustment for the water rates and the sewer rates to cover those hidden direct costs for health insurance, retirement, workers' comp, Medicare, all that kind of stuff. You'll see those in B, direct costs here, and those are calculated out in you go to page 74. Mm -hmm. So B, about two-thirds of the way down the paper. Those are the direct costs. That's rip and read stuff, really easy to calculate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's indirect costs, and those indirect costs are, are associated with my time, 
the accountant's time, the treasurer's time, the collector's time, uh, and anybody in town hall who has anything to do with water and sewer, collecting the bills, accepting the, uh, mailing the bills out, mm -hmm. administering, and those indirect costs have to be accounted for too. They're broken into two subcategories, one of which is salaries indirect costs, so how much of my salary is supported by sewer and water because I have to administer sewer and water issues, mm -hmm. and how much of uh, how much are my expenses, which is the second subcategory of indirect costs. So the building, the property insurance, the liability insurance, the uh, the uh, other kinds of expenses associated with just maintaining our offices so that we can support the functions of water sewer and now Hadley Media because they're part of the enterprise funds too. So that's A, these are the indirect costs. So the indirect costs, this is all laid out as a formula for salaries, 480, $438,000 of salary in, of uh, indirect costs to a formula, it works out to thirteen thousand dollars for water, fourteen thousand five hundred for sewer, and four hundred and sixty-six dollars for Hadley Media. That's the indirect cost for salaries. The next are the buildings. The town accountants' uh, uh, support budget legal property insurance less 111F, that comes up to $640,000. And again, you apply the formula, and Waters contributes 66,708, sewer $71,000, and $12,000 for Hadley Media. So you add those together, the indirect costs and the direct costs, and you come up with a total which now needs to be adjusted by the final thing that we add to it, which is the shared burden of OPEB, our contribution to OPEB. And so that's C at the bottom. And again, this is all driven by formula. Mm -hmm. You can see that water contributes $11,000, sewer $10,000, $580 for HPAT, and then you just take those three totals to get four totals together, this total, this total, this total, this total, and you add it up for the final calculation. When I first started here in FY 2005, this formula did not exist. It was a mishmash of calculations that were poorly documented not very well thought out in my estimation. Estimates snatch a number from the air. I could not make any sense of it. I tinkered with it for a couple of years in order to come up with a rational, transparent, fair way of calculating out those hidden costs to the taxpayers that needed, needed to be borne by the three enterprise funds. I eventually chucked the whole project. I scrapped it. I said that there's no Fixing this, you can take a rough diamond, you can polish it, you can get a beautiful gem. You take a lump of coal, you polish it, it's still a lump of coal. And <laughs> what we had was a lump of coal. So I went out and I talked to my fellow managers and I said, please, how do other towns handle this, this problem? And the town of Littleton had a formula which I mirrored right here. So this is taken from Littleton, Massachusetts adapted to Hadley, and then uh, applied here in order to achieve uh, this uh, charge back to the enterprise funds so that we at town meeting could say, no, your taxpayer dollars are not supporting sewer. And you notice that we got a question on that. It was the one question on the, on the first article is, you know, how do we how do we understand the sewer uh, uh, budget here? Mm -hmm. So, in 2014, the Department of Revenue, in the middle of the Great Recession, 
didn't have enough work to do, so they went out and they, they went did a compliance check with uh, towns because this could be used as a way to get around the constraints of Proposition 2 and a half if handled badly, which we're not doing. So they wanted to do a compliance check, so they selected the Sewer Enterprise Fund for Hadley, but because we run it through all through the same formula, we did the water and sewer together. We sat down with them in this very room, and we sat down, we walked through the process, and they had a couple of minor points to make, but otherwise they reviewed it and found it to be a transparent, fair, and accountable way of coming up with these charges. Mm -hmm. And so, just for example, how much <coughs> is the uh, water for, what was the total money? Two hundred. What does that say? Two twelve, three eighty one. Okay, that was for the. Uh, okay, direct. Uh, this is uh, C. This is the OPEP contribution. Do you mean? I was just saying the total for the. There it is. Water, those are the water sewer Hadley Media. Oh, those are the three totals yeah. down at the bottom. The grand totals. Yeah. That includes everything. Okay. So they are oh, significant. Mm -hmm. And so. In relation to them. Well, and yeah. So we're, when these numbers right here, and it's, it's money to go back to the general fund, where do we see the money from here going back in the general fund? Go over to the revenues. Oh, no, that's revenues. That's, that's exactly where you need to be, page 38. <laughs> well done, well done. Well done. <laughs> All right, so table four, enterprise receipts. Here's the, the rates that come in. Here's your enterprise fund chargebacks, second and fourth and sixth line down. Where it says water administration? Yep. Okay. Okay, there it is. Okay, great. Yeah. Bravo. Okay. And so I, I feel that, it, that, you know, it looks like that's a fair, especially since that's how other towns are doing it, it seems mm -hmm. like a, um, a fair mm -hmm. calculation mm -hmm. to keep going exactly. with. I think that's it, too. Yep. Okay. So what, what I'll do is I'll send you, when I put together the next enterprise, A, a I'm going to be giving a presentation to the select board about enterprise funds, administrative charges, and what, how we have arrived at this place. What are we, what are we trying to do for the taxpayers? Mm -hmm. um, and B, I'll send you the methodology as to how I can achieve every, every line. Yeah. The only thing that you could say, you, I, I feel that could be questionable, is the indirect ones. Because, you know, how do I know exactly how much of your salary really goes into that? So, I mean, well, the direct, but that was a, a small, that was like 13000 compared to the 300000 So, it's really, mm -hmm. that is a small, very small uh, percentage compared to. Yeah, so this. I, I, and, I, I'm, and I, I'm just saying, if, if we were to nickel and dime it, that's where it's the indirect is where you would, because the direct um, costs you can't really say. Well, it, I mean, you it is look, what it is. you look, you look at the uh, at the count of the formula that we're using. We're very generous in our formula, okay. based upon the formula for the indirect for my salary. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're charging just a little bit more than 3% of my salary, 3% of my time. 
is spent on the sewer. Now, if you ask me how much time I spent on <laughs> the sewer just this week alone, it's going to be a that. lot more than 3% of my time. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's a very generous formula there, mm -hmm. giving people a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's generous to the people who have sewer. But it's no, maybe not generous to the people who have non-sewer. No, well, it, it, I mean, it's generous to the, the, the department itself. Yeah, it, okay, it, yeah. into that I mean, fund. I mean, as far as to right. say that I spent 3% of my time on fed. water, it's 3% of my time on sewer, and less than 1% of my time on Hadley Media. Yes. I mean, come on, that doesn't, that barely passes the test red face test. I mean, right. spent a lot more time doing that on them. Yeah. So okay. it's it's a generous formula. Very nice. Well I think you've answered a lot of the questions that people yeah. may be having around uh, the enterprise funds mm -hmm. and the chargebacks. Because I, I know that's a big question um, that people have often yeah. and don't really understand it. But a, a lot of it is, I mean just the retirement alone, a lot of it is the direct cost our direct costs. Right. And there's um, and another question people ask is, is um, can um, you use those funds for anything else but, um, but just the purpose of the enterprise? And they have to be related. They have to be related. They have to be related. And we've always done that, and they've always been related. That's I right. am not aware of any time when we didn't. When we didn't do it. I know that it was questioned a little bit um, this past meaning on some things i know john questioned a few items um but i think they are related enough um mm -hmm. what was it the gables that we yeah, talked about right. so which supports the mechanic who works on all the vehicles which water sewer okay highway so vehicles it, so you're, mm -hmm. you're so contributing to the structure that's supporting the work of the mechanic who's working on all the vehicles okay so yeah so there's um it, it, it is related so it sounds like we're on board with you know i i haven't i i um Especially, and I think John kind of makes sure he watches that constantly. Mm -hmm. I see that he does that. No, and it's good that people mm -hmm. will, uh, ask questions, and mm -hmm. you know, if they've got concerns, we can talk them over. Uh, I'm happy to show people this formula as well as the methodology and talk about the history of how we got here. Mm -hmm. Now, if the select board decides that they do want enterprise funds where the taxpayers do support them, and there are such things in the Commonwealth, I think North Acton is a good example, mm -hmm. then we can have a completely different kind of conversation about that because then the expectation is that no, the enterprise funds are not self-sustaining and that the taxpayers are going to be paying the, the proportionate cost of the enterprise funds. But that policy decision has not been made. You know, the select board can make that policy decision, but they have not. They've made, in fact, the opposite. Mm -hmm. So is the point of the enterprise funds, uh, well, like for sewer and handy media, so people, and water, I guess, people who don't receive any benefit don't have to pay for it? Right. Now, there can be an argument saying that everybody benefits from this. Um, you know, we wouldn't have the commercial development if it weren't for our water and sewer right. infrastructure. So, you know, so right. you know, there's an argument to be said that, that people should be contributing, but that argument, that debate was held decades ago and people decided that these would be self-sustaining enterprise funds. What's the process to get it changed? Is it just a, a select, select board? board. Yeah, we'd, we'd have to go through the whole budget process. So uh, would the benefit of changing it, well, when, would it be that you would save a lot of administrative costs? Um, or is it just a philosophical change? I think, I think that, I think if you had enterprise funds that could never expect to be self-sustaining, then 
for solvency reasons, you'd want to have that uh, taxpayer money supporting them. So. It's kind of six of one half dozen of the other. Yeah. Because if you can't charge enough, get enough from the sewer charges, it just comes out of other taxes. You just have to charge more property taxes. Well, I mean, yeah, if, if, if you had taxpayer support. Sewer charges. Yeah, I'm saying, but he's saying if it was not self if it couldn't be self sustaining, that would mean there'd be a limit to how much you could hike it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're. You look at the town of Montague, and I'm not beating up on them. They have their, their own road to go over there. They raised their sewer rates 71% in the last week. <laughs> because they're clearly not going to make it for lots of interesting reasons. Um, but there they have the ability to go to the ratepayers and say, sorry, you have to pay 71% more than you would have expected to. So. Uh, we're a long, we're a long way from that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, Maybe they were undercharging for a while. <laughs> uh, basically, I think they had a system that collapsed on that. Oh. Uh, you know, that they had a processing plant that basically failed and the EP shut them down. Um, so well, we what are we talking about in terms of the number of houses that are not connected to water So we got about nine hundred accounts roughly for uh -huh. sewer out of uh, housing stock of uh, I want to say two thousand houses, something like that. Really? Maybe more than that. Oh, more than half don't have sewer. Yeah. They have their own septic system. Yes. Okay. And what about water? Mostly everybody's on water, but I mean, there are some people who are on well. Yeah. Okay, so water lines haven't extended out to their road, okay? Um, like the people out on Honey Pot. Oh, yeah. So not very many. Not very many. Yeah. Winesix has got some wells for their commercial water use. And then people pump water out of the river. We see that happening. <laughs> yes, they, yes, they do. <laughs> I, I have wondered about that. You know, like um, we'll see, you know, we'll be paddling down the river and we'll see a big hose with a big pump. With a big for loud fields. diesel pump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's for fields. Pumping yeah, right. water on the field. Yeah. And that, is that okay? Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's How's that fair? that the people who live on the river get to access the water, but farms who are across the street don't. Well, the location, came location, in first. Location, location. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the came in first rule. Yeah, <laughs> they got there first. Yeah, I heard about that Good one. choice. <laughs> okay, I always wondered about that. Yeah. But if you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we're, does anybody else have any questions? I think we've hit everything that we wanted to hit. Well All right. So I'll see you next Wednesday at 6 All right. So uh, say we, we motion to adjourn. Nice. I thought we did motion to adjourn. All right. It was a Wednesday. Oh, okay. For some reason, I'm going to tell you. It's coming, not, not, not tomorrow, not tomorrow, but not the next Halloween. night. So, um, I'll be kind of fine. I'll dress up. Yeah, we can dress up. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'll come as a muggle. <laughs> what are you going to come in? As a muggle. <laughs> Motion to adjourn 657. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you for the Bye. Bye.